Hey guys, welcome to Word Wrenching. I'm going to show you how to choose the correct electrical wire for your car's next project. This will include the tools you need, wire material, gauge, the length, and connections. So first off, let's go with the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a wire crimper. I really like this Titan one. It's a ratcheting style crimper, so works great. And then you're going to need a wire cutter and stripper. This one is by Vice Grip. You can get both of these on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. Um, and I've shown this in another video, but all you do is you just take your wire and you put it in here up to the yellow stop, close down, and it strips it right off. And you have all the adjustability here for different size gauges. It's got a cutter built in and some little crimpers. But I prefer this uh, tool for the crimping more. You're going to need your wire, so we're going to get into more detail in a minute on uh, choosing the right type of wire. So I have a couple of different types of wire here, and we got some heavy gauge, uh, heavy four gauge over here. Some things you might need during your project, and in a separate video I'm going to go into more depth. Depth is a relay, how to use one of these. These are great for running high current um, projects like uh, accessory fans, radiator fans radios, uh, the EFI system. You're gonna need a switch, um, most likely like, so if you're doing off-road lights or um, just anything that you wanna be able to switch on and off. So this switch here is a 30 amp, and we can tell because it says right here, it's rated for 30 amps. So this can hold a lot more um, amperage than this one, which is a little uh, switch. And this one's actually rated for six amps. So it says right here. You might need a inline fuse. So here's a um, common style you could find at AutoZone or Amazon. All you do is you just push in and rotate it. And then inside is your glass fuse, kind of like um, the types of fuses that your Christmas lights use. So then you would just push it back in. You can twist. And that's an inline fuse. You might need something like a wire cover. Um, they come in different styles. I like this more, um, I guess I'd call it a braided nylon looking style wire cover. It's great for one to two wires. It keeps things clean and whatnot. Um, if, you're, if you're running a whole lot of wires, you can use the, uh, the, the standard larger plastic loom style. They both work great. I've, I've used both on, on the same project. Another thing you're gonna need are wire connectors. So I have different ones here. This is made for 12 to 10 gauge wires. This one is a lot smaller, so it's made for a 18 to 22 gauge. And then we have these eye connectors here. So let's say we're making a ground wire. We would connect this and then the proper size grounding bolt would go through it. And then we have another connector here. And this one's not labeled, but really you don't need it to be labeled. You just wanna make sure that your stripped wire, so the exposed ends, fits snugly inside of the um, metal piece. And then when we crimp it down, I love the heat shrink style, so I just take my heat gun, get them nice and warm, and then they'll shrink down, create a nice waterproof seal over the uh, wires, and your connection is nice and secure. So you don't have to get the heat shrink ones. Um, they're not much more expensive than the standard ones that you can just use electrical tape on, but I like the way the heat shrink ones work and I think they do a great job. Links to all the materials I used in this video can be found in the description below. So let's talk about the wire. So here's a wire, this is another one. So we got yellow, white, and red. Um, there's two types of wires that you're generally gonna come into uh, play with when you're searching. One is called oxygen free copper, which are these, and then the other one is called um, copper clad aluminum. So, copper clad aluminum is cheaper. What it is, it's aluminum wire with a coating. So, this is an oxygen free uh, piece right here. But what it would do is it would, um, it would look like this, it would look like copper. But if you cut it and you look down the middle, you would see it looked like aluminum in the middle. And that's just because if they take an aluminum wire, which is a lot cheaper, 
and then they would coat it with a um, copper coating. That's great for speaker wire. Um, you're not running a lot of amps and everything through a speaker wire. Now, the problem comes is where um, you're trying to run a higher amperage and the, the copper clad is just, it, it's cheaper, it's not as good quality. Save your time, save money, uh, it's safer. Use the oxygen free copper, which is a, like a pure copper style. Um, so it's, there's no, there's no coating inside. It's just copper. Now this one over here is a um, marine grade wire and all it is, it's a copper wire, the oxygen free copper, but it's covered in tin on the outside of the copper and that prevents corrosion from the salt water. So this is just as good as the regular copper and it gives you that added protection of um, corrosion resistance. So if you're working on a boat or anything like that, or if you got a car that just sits next to the salt water, think about using this um, for the long run. It's again, it's gonna be more expensive than the oxygen free copper, but you're having the corrosion resistance um, and then you're just, you're saving time and energy in the long run. Selecting the proper gauge. I'm going to throw up on the screen a wire gauge chart and that's going to kind of let you follow along with what I'm telling you here. Wires are measured in gauge sizes. So this one here is a 14 gauge. This red wire here is a 10 gauge. And then I have these heavy duty wires off to the side here. which these are four gauges. I use these for when I was putting new fuse boxes into my uh, Jeep. We're gonna figure out how to select the proper gauge wire. It's length and amperage for selecting the proper gauge. So amperage is the measurement of the strength of the current. We don't care about how many volts something is, we care about its amperage. Um, a wire rated for seven amps is not gonna be able to handle um, 20 amps of current going through it. You're gonna have a fire um, and things like that. And also, if you, if you run wire that's made for 20 amps worth of power, um, but you're only running 7 amps through it, you're, you're wasting money on more expensive wire because the, the larger the wire gets, the more it costs because you're using more copper. And also, you're taking up more space. You only have so much space behind the dash or in your engine bay. Um, so we kind of want to, we want to make sure we hit that sweet spot of what size do we need. Um, so that's where a wire chart comes into play. So as the wire size gets larger, so as it physically gets larger, the gauge number gets smaller. So like we said, this red wire that we showed was a 10 gauge wire. It is physically larger than the white and yellow wires, which are 14 gauge. And the problem is uh, it's due to stretching. So a 14 gauge wire is stretched more than a 10 gauge wire. So let's go over how do we uh, select the right size. So let's say we have a subwoofer with an amp and it has a max current of 25 amps. We're gonna mount it, mount it in the trunk and it needs to be connected to the battery. So let's say the battery is in the engine. So our amp's in the trunk and battery's in the engine. And so we're gonna we're gonna need about 10 feet of wire. We've kind of measured it out. We're in the ballpark of 10 feet. So we look at our chart. We know we're at 25, so we're right here between 20 and 35. And then we go across to we have about 10 feet of um, wire we're gonna need. So that puts us right here at 10 gauge. So we need a 10 gauge wire for that amp. Now let's say the battery's in the trunk. So we got about two feet of space. Well, we're still running 25 amps, but now because we're only two feet away, we need 12 gauges of wire. We need a larger wire as the length increases because resistance increases with length. So remember, so the batteries in the trunk is a 12 gauge wire, which is a physically smaller wire than the 10 gauge wire for the, for the engine. So a larger wire has less resistance than smaller wires, like physically larger wire. So because it's in the trunk and it's not going to very far, that amperage, that uh, power does not need to travel as far, 
it's just it doesn't need as much um, strength the resistance we don't need that strong of a uh, wire but because we're going all the way to the engine and the other case we need a thicker wire a physically thicker wire so we need that 10 gauge because it's having to hold more heat more power um, throughout the whole process that sums up how to choose the correct electrical wire when working on a car main thing you need to remember is um, what how much how much how much current am I running so when I was building the Jeep's fuse boxes I had to calculate how many amps each item has and, and if you if you buy anything that draws current it'll tell you on their website how what the peak amps and what the operating amps are you want to do it based on the peak amp because you want to give yourself that safety net for uh, just to reduce the fire risk so in the Jeep's case um, I knew I was running about a hundred amps um, give or take for the fuse boxes so I knew I had maybe seven feet worth of wire probably less than that probably four to seven feet um, I could have gone away with an eight gauge wire for it but, um, I just happened to have four gauge wire on hand so it was able to work out for me that's kind of how to do it once you understand how to read this chart it gets really easy for you so make sure you put a fuse in line with your uh, certain items so on my fuse boxes each of them I have a 80 amp and a 100 amp fuse because I have two fuse boxes and one of the fuse boxes I know is running close to 100 amps of um, max draw if everything was on and the other ones at about 80 so that's why I have those fuses set up so I can have those uh, I want those fuses to boil before the fuse box fails so if I'm running a like my fans and stuff I have an inline fuse I use a, a different style that uses more of an automotive um, more modern style but these glass ones work too they still sell them you want to make sure that the fuse whenever you have a fuse you want to make sure it runs at the same um, amp rating as your wire so if my um, electric fan has 20 amps as the peak draw power um, I want to make sure that my wire is rated for at or above 20 amps but I also want to make sure I have a fuse in here that's rated for the wire so if my wire is rated for 25 amps I want to put it there or I can put it at 20 you never want to put a fuse in that's stronger than your wire that's the main thing the fuse is meant to go and pop and cut off that current before your wire melts and catches on fire so you could have um, whatever fuse you want in there as long as it is not stronger than your wire just remember that just as long as it's not stronger than your wire you're good to go